We're here today with Jonathan, Jonathan Nesmith with the Houston Young Republicans. Jonathan, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Glad to have you here today to talk to us about what's going on with the youth and the Young Republicans of Houston and Harris County. And thank you, Bob, for having me. I, uh, it's a great honor. And again, we're, we're doing a lot of great things with the city and with uh, the organization as a whole. And, you know, glad we're here to talk about it today and really just show where we're going to, you know, take the Houston Young Republicans to. It's, it's going to be a great, great opportunity. As the president of the Houston Young Republicans, what uh, what are you doing with the club now to to try to reach out to young voters and bring them into the Republican values and Republican Party? Well, I think the I think the key thing is that they feel that young voters feel as though they have no connection to the GOP. They feel that it's nothing but a bunch of older individuals who have by and large been in charge of the party for a long time, and that their morals and values are not the same as theirs, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Republicans stand for so much more than that, and, and it's a matter of rebranding, and it's as simple as that. So we aim to rebrand what we already believe in, not change, but rebrand it and sell it in a different way, and that's, that's what we believe is the crucial effort that we'll have this year. Okay, and this weekend you have an event coming up to uh, try to help some local small businesses, mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, March 9th, uh, we have our first annual Free Enterprise Crawfish Boil. It's an opportunity for us to highlight uh, a couple of the bills that are going through right now, SD 515 through 518, and they essentially highlight uh, what has disallowed uh, craft breweries around the state from expanding. Uh, there's been unneeded uh, restrictions put on them based off of what they need to do to distribute um, their, their different um, their, their beer that they sell, and we feel like it's an unneeded burden on these craft breweries, and it's just a matter of lobbying one way or the other that, that put it there, and, and we'd like it reversed so that these businesses can expand properly and and do what they need to do, which is just grow and thrive in, in our Texas economy. And of course, the uh, one of the founding principles of republicanism is, is that the government get out of the way of business and let business grow and prosper, and what we're seeing through this, the laws that are in place now is the big businesses in the industry, the, uh, the big brewers, if you will, have enabled the legislature or put pressure to the legislature to put a clamp on the, these small growing businesses. Is, is that right? Absolutely. That, that, that is the crux of it. It's really uh, it's an easy concept for people to understand. You have businesses here that want to grow. Mm -hmm. You have lobbying that inflicted harm on them via restrictions to, you know, like I said, simple things like using a distributor. You know, a distributor is a, is a pricey thing for a, a brewery or for anyone. Right. To, to utilize and for them at such a small point in their life when they're just starting out to have to yield all these costs and, and pay for all these things that, that they really can't afford it does what this, these previous bills were intended and that is to keep them from expanding and their competition obviously to your big brewers your big distributors and, and that's why they put this bill in and we want it overturned because it should be a fair and balanced playing field for every single individual in that market. Who is carrying this bill in, in the Senate, or these bills in the Senate for you? Uh, Dan Patrick right now. Senator Patrick is, is, is the big carrier for this bill, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're excited. There are a lot of other different representatives in, in both houses that are a part of this bill, but by and large, we're, we have support all across the board. There's not a lot of opposition. I mean, of course, there's, there's lobbying behind it, but there's mm -hmm. not a lot of outspoken opposition in the legislature right now against this bill. Um, and so we feel very confident about it, and it's, it's not about what they sell, it's about their right to expand. Exactly right. That you know, any business that's selling a legal product should be able to compete freely in the marketplace and not be held back by government restrictions. And so I applaud you for for standing behind these groups. Um, tell us again around where the, the crawfish bowl oil is going to be. It's going to be at Jackson's Watering Hole. Uh, it's located in the Midtown area, right off of Richmond. Uh, we're going to do it from 11 to 4, okay. and uh, it's going to be a great opportunity. We're going to have. Tons of crawfish, we're gonna have a great event out there, tons of prizes to give away via a lot of the breweries. They've all come in and, and wanted to be a part of this. Um, you know, we have a wonderful event planned. Okay, and uh, we, is there some place on the web or on Facebook where people can find out about this? Absolutely, uh, we have flyers and emails that are um, gonna be released here in the next day. We also have the event already created on Facebook, so that's available to everyone that's a member of the Houston Young Republicans all over. So you just go to Facebook and look for Houston Young Republicans and they'll find all the information right there. Absolutely. Simple okay. thing. Well, since this is Texas GOP vote, <laughs> let's talk about the vote in the last election. You know, we had some, uh, one of the key issues that, that hit our, that led to our failure in the election was the youth vote. And it, it really was a shock to me because so many young people are unemployed in this country because of the direct policies of Barack Obama, and yet 
they came out in numbers and voted for him. And it was really hard for me to understand that. Uh, particularly in the, the, um, the Asian vote, which has historically gone Republican, the young Asians went Democrat this time. Uh, Cuban American vote typically goes Republican, but the young Cuban vote this time went with Obama. And the young women vote went, by and large, for, for many issues. And some people feel it was because of the social issues. What do you think was, was really the determining factor in keeping the young voters away from the Republican Party? They can't find a way to identify themselves with it. Mm -hmm. it, it really, you know, it's, it's not that the answer is, is complex, it's rather simple. Implementing it might not be the easiest thing, but it's a simple answer. Identification. They couldn't find a way to say, I believe in that. This is what I stand for. And that's a, a fault of our own for not taking the time to think about the fact that we have a changing generation, that we have to show ourselves in a different way. Mm -hmm. Again, I believe in everything that our party platform stands for, and I will by no means ever support um, what some people have called for, which is, well, we have to maybe lessen our morals on a couple things, or maybe mm -hmm. we need to try to be a little more like the liberals. Absolutely not. No, we are who we are, and we believe it. We just have to sell it a different way. Mm -hmm. And that, that's our issue, is we're rebranding. Yeah, one of the things that I think is that, uh, particularly on the issue, some of the social issues like abortion, um, we've led with those issues on the tip of the spear for so long. It's, it's like a football team that is really good at running the ball up the middle. Eventually the other team figures out how to defend against mm -hmm. that. And so you're right, I think we need to find another way to, to sell that and, and not in any way give up our basic core principles but find a way to market them in a way that is more readily understandable to people as to how it affects them in their daily lives. In Houston in particular, what are you going to be doing with the Houston Young Republicans to bring in uh, the youth vote in general, but specifically in, in the Hispanic and the uh, minority communities and the women, uh, young women's vote? Well, what we, what we realized was, was first we had to identify the problem. The problem was our inability to be active in these communities. So what we went ahead and did is we expanded the scope and scale of our outreach program. Uh, but we're making it efficient, not just enlarging it just, just because we think that more bodies will help, but we have chairs specifically for the Asian community, the Hispanic community, the African American community, mm -hmm. uh, and then disenfranchised libertarians. We have identified all of these different areas and we brought in experts, we brought in people who are campaign veterans mm -hmm. to fill these outreach positions and who are already well networked into these communities. Um, obviously for us Hispanics are the biggest, um, the biggest gain that needs to be made. We feel like they are traditionally conservative. They, they, I mean, they reek of conservatism. They are big, big families when it comes to religion, when it comes to, you know, church, when it comes to their morals. They are inherently Republicans and we need to seize the day on that. We do. And last night there was a meeting of the Houston uh, Federation of Hispanic Republicans and several of your members were there at that meeting uh, where they were honoring uh, Republican Mayor Art Martinez Devara from uh, Von Arby in Bear County. So it was, it was good to see those people out. I know you had your own event going on last night, but it's good to see that you've got enough people to spread them around a little bit. Yeah, That's, that's a good strategy. Well, what um, at Texas GOP Vote, what can we do to help you with marketing uh, to the young voters? Really for us, it's, it's taking hold of uh, a lot of the, the social networking, the, the different things that, that the liberals have you know, been on for five, six, seven, eight years. They, they saw what social networking, what online marketing would do, and Republicans didn't move on that. For us, again, rebranding is a big part of it too, but our online push, you know, the amount of time spent with online, you know, with our young voters, it's, it's substantial. That's where they're at. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter. They're, that's where they get their information, where they see these posts, and that's what we need is we need it a barrage of, of public relations and marketing to show what we're doing and where we're at and, uh, and to get these guys connected. That's a big part of it. Yeah, the, the Democrats really kicked our tail collectively when it comes to not just social media, but the basic blocking and tackling of politics, the organizing the grassroots, finding out who your voters are and getting those voters to the poll. We got a very high percentage of our voters to the poll, but we ran out of voters. And uh, so we've got to find a way to identify who our voters are. In the, in the 2008 election, in the primary, the Democrats had 470,000, give or take a few, uh, 
voters vote in their primary, and we had about 170,000. So there's a huge discrepancy in identified voters, and organizations like yours, I think, can be very helpful in identifying, particularly in some of these new young residential areas uh, down inside the loop where in the Heights and uh, Midtown and the gallery area where, where there's a lot of that youth vote and probably a lot of them are very conservative, business-oriented people like yourself, but they don't know who we are and what we're doing. So I applaud you for reaching out to them and want to do everything we can to help. Okay. Well, thank you for coming here to Texas GOP Vote. Let's talk again soon and uh, see how things are going. All right, thank you, Bob. Appreciate Look forward it. to your event this weekend. Right, thank you. Appreciate it.